Say okay, bonjour everybody. Hello, welcome to uh, every day's or uh, every Tuesday's drum session. Um, I'm really excited to be able to share this week. Uh, there's been lots of stuff going on, so um, I've just kind of been out of the loop, just trying to kind of recover. Um, but I'm looking forward to just sharing some songs and some stories. Um, just before we get started, of course, I wanted to welcome everybody um, and acknowledge the land upon which we stand, because that's important. It's important to know where we are before we know where we're going. Um, it's important to put our feet on the ground to really build that strong foundation for not only ourselves, but for our future generations. And to know that fully and completely um, is to honor our ancestors, to honor what's brought us here, to honor the ancestors that were here before us. And so it's uh, such a beautiful, beautiful thing to share. So, um, oh, Fante. <laughs> Hello, Seth. Um, so just to welcome everybody into the circle, I wanted to acknowledge that we're here, I'm here in Treaty 7 territory, Mohenstedt, which means elbow. Uh, it's where the Bow River and the Elbow River come together. And there's such power when two bodies of water come together, whether it be a stream meeting the ocean or a river meeting another river, there's this power of the collision, but then the force that they kind of carry forward. And uh, Mohenstedt really embodies that embodies that strength of coming together and how much more powerful we are when we do come together and so um i honor the teachings of the blackfoot from siksika gainai and bagani um i i'm a visitor to this land i'm cree and anishinaabe from metis cree nation in saskatchewan which is in treaty six territory but now i call mokins just my home and I honor the Blackfoot elders that have taught me so much and, you know, my sisters and knowledge keepers that have shared so much and um, just creating this place where we can connect deeply with the land and with each other is so, so important. I honor Tsutsuna and the people there, the elders there who have guided me, um, gone to sweats there, uh, and it's just, it's beautiful. Uh, they're known as the beaver people. And whenever you're close to the river, you feel that power. Whenever you've hung out with the beaver, <laughs> I used to take my medicines out in Cincinnati. Um, not so much anymore because they've kind of, um, with the ring road, there's the spots that we used to go aren't there anymore. And um, it's, it's sad. <laughs> but um, when I would go down and pick my medicines, there would be this family of beavers that would visit every year to go when I was uh, picking. And they were hilarious because, of course, they would be like, we're territorial, and they'd slap their um, tail on the river, and basically warning me. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'm just here to pick medicine. So I talked to them, and um, I thank them for having me around their home. Uh, and then I picked my medicines, of course, laying tobacco down for those medicines, being thankful for the earth, thankful for this moment, thankful for the medicines, for the growth. Um, and when I had left, it was just a sense of peace. And uh, the beavers, after that initial show of, um, you know, like, get out of our territory, we're like, oh, it's you again, whatever. And so by the end of it, they were kind of watching me leave going, oh, you're, you're gone already. But um, yeah, when I think of Tsitsuna being a beaver people, that's the first thing I think of. I think of that, that peace, that sense of um, belonging in that circle uh, with the beaver while we're, you know, picking our medicine. Uh, I also honor, honor the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley, Wesley First Nations. They are uh, on the path to going out to the mountains. So the views out there are just spectacular. Um, when the waters were coming, they know they're the first to see the waters rushing, see the waters raging, and they would warn uh, us ahead of time. Um, they're always those harbingers of like letting us know like this, something's wrong, something's out. Um, and really they have this sense of belonging out there. Um, the land out there is so powerful. I go out there for sweats and there's this, this deep connection when you come out of a lodge and you're looking at this beautiful, beautiful mountains and then you hear the river and it's just so, so incredibly powerful. And I'm so thankful to be in this territory. Every day I wake up and I say, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. Um, it's so important to live in gratitude for where you are and um it helps you recognize and humble yourself before the day ahead and so i'm very very thankful to be here when we acknowledge the land we're acknowledging that we're acknowledging how grateful we are to be here to be on this land we're acknowledging the families that have been here for thousands upon thousands of generations we're acknowledging how um, beautiful they are and how important they are and how powerful those teachings are. 
And we're also acknowledging that we have to respect that. We have to respect the history that has been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. You know, some of the oldest sites have been dated, predated over 15,000 years. That's that history here that sometimes we miss it if we don't pay attention. So this is why it's important to acknowledge that. Um, and I also acknowledge the Métis of Region 3, which is why I proudly wear my Métis sash uh, to act as that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture, because the Métis laid that foundation, they were that connection, um, and this is why our, the Métis symbol is the infinity sign, it's that figure eight, it's the two nations, two peoples coming together to create one being, um, and that is the Métis people. And so they offer that bridge, they offer those connections. And I think it's really important to be able to keep our voices alive um, in all people uh, and share our stories because that's what makes us human. And that's what makes us community and makes us family is sharing those stories and really understanding each other on a deeper level. And that's the whole point of doing a land acknowledgement is to understand that relationship. It's to understand, you know, that sense of community and sense of belonging. And what a treaty was, was a promise. It's about really dialing it back and honoring the promises that were made originally. Laws are just fake promises. They're not real. Whereas the treaty was a promise. It was a promise to share and to learn from each other and to grow together. And so it's very important that we acknowledge that. So to welcome everybody into the circle today, I wanted to share with you the Cree welcome song. Traditionally, when we sing songs, we sing in rounds of four to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel. Uh, but this song is a little different. We actually sing it in rounds of three, and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning. There's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hope of life. So it teaches us to really honor each other for those differences. Because if everybody was exactly the same, the world would be incredibly boring and nothing would get done. So we need those differences to make our community resilient. And it teaches us to honor and respect each other for those differences, not to judge each other because we're on different paths. And we will continue moving that circle side by side, but we can't hinder anybody's progress in that circle. That's not our job. And that's what the song really represents. Um, it honors that connection that we have to each other, that deep connection that we have to the earth because she keeps spinning. Um, and it also teaches us to really honor and respect those teachings that have led us here, our ancestors. Um, but it's about inclusion. And the reason we sing it in three is to keep that circle open so people are welcome to come in at any time and welcome to leave at any time. This is why it's so important to do that within all of our circles to be able to allow people to ebb and flow um, because you can't force people to learn you can't force people to do something or else you just shut down and it's like when we're learning from each other it's important to make it relatable um, and that's what stories are stories are relatable and so this song Miasin is the Cree welcome song traditionally um, it, it's sung uh, in rounds of three and it is from the Nakaha family from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. And I'm very thankful for this song. It has really, um, it's a beautiful way to start. It gives me a sense of purpose when I start. And so I'm very, very thankful to be able to share this. And I always acknowledge where those songs have come from um, because it's important to know um, because for many, many years it was illegal to speak our languages or to share our stories or to share a song. And so when we're still able to share these traditions, when we're still able to share these stories, when we're still able to share our songs, and when we're starting to recover the language, it just shows how resilient we can be. And this is why it's so important to be able to share these songs now, so that people do learn, which was the whole point of treaty. And so Mia Sin, the Cree welcome song, uh, it doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. So I'm gonna stand up to say. <laughs> Mia, 
songs I wanted to uh, begin with a smudge so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my earrings um, because metal holds energy and I just don't want that energy clinging to me I want to get rid of it and so um, when we smudge it's our way to uh, cleanse it's our way to heal it's our way to uh, say thank you to the things around us it's our way to accept those wonderful things um, and just it's our way to heal. Like it's our way. We say pray, but I mean pray. All it is is setting intention, is setting energy, um, and that's asking for the things that you need. Um, that's all prayer is. Just uh, uh, what elder said. Prayers are wishes. And so, what are you wishing for when you use that smoke to cast your wishes to the universe? And it's a beautiful way of looking at it. So, I'm going to bring over my smudge bowl. So this is my smudge bowl. It is an abalone shell. And uh, the abalone usually was found in uh, BC, just uh, in the ocean there. And there was so much overfishing that it's gotten harder and harder and harder to find larger shells because as soon as they get to a certain point, people just kept overfishing them and overharvesting them. Um, and so when we, uh, they became endangered. Uh, and so there was a fishing ban on them. And so whenever we have uh, get gifted one, it's, it's a blessing because it reminds us this was a living being this is a living thing and so we have to honor that life that it holds so the shell itself represents water because of course it's a shell it's from the water and it holds things so uh, it represents the women's medicine because we're held in our mother's um womb before we come into this world we're held in mother earth um and the water is what sustains us so that represents water the medicine that we put into the bowl um, no matter what medicine we use, as soon as it goes into the bowl, it represents Earth. Um, and because it comes from the Earth, of course, to, uh, it represents our physical body. When we light it on fire, it represents fire, which is our mind. It's that spark of uh, learning and that spark of creativity that kind of fuels everything. And then the smoke going up is um, that spirit that's connected to the air. So that's our prayers or that energy going out. To creator it's getting rid of the things that we don't need um the great thing about smudging too i love it when science proves things we've done for thousands of years it makes me look real smart but um it actually is really good for us so when we smudge the smoke from the smudge it uh, neutralizes airborne toxins like viruses bacteria fungus um different kinds of just random stuff in the air not only that it ph balances the air and it ionizes Air. So it actually makes our air healthier to breathe. So if you smudge in a house, that hair, that air is going to be healthier to breathe in that room or in your whole home. So this is why it's important to smudge. I like to smudge at least every day because I find that on days that I don't smudge, I get really stressed out. I'm like, why am I so stressed? And usually it's because I haven't smudged. Um, but uh, weekly is good <laughs> or as often as you can, as often as you can. And whenever you're making a good like a decision or whenever you're having a really hard time or whenever you just really need to go back into yourself and into your being and acknowledge who you are and connect to your spirit that's when you would smudge just all the time because then you're always in that level so that's good so i'll talk a little bit about the medicine so i always lay out all of my medicines even if i'm not using all of them today i'm only going to be using sage which is the women's medicine 
uh, in the East, I have sweet grass. Um, and when I share my teachings, these are only, these are my teachings. If they make sense to you and you can use them in your own life, awesome. If they don't, that's okay too. Um, this is why we have oral traditions for oral storytelling. Whatever's meant for us, we'll remember. Whatever's not, won't take up space in our brain. There won't be a test, you'll be okay. So um, in the East, on my medicine wheel, we have sweet grass. And sweet grass is our connection to our mind. It's our connection to fire. It's our connection to the morning and um, the springtime because that's when all life begins again, which is why it's also connected to our childhood. And sweet grass whoop, is in this lovely, lovely braid and it smells really, really good. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm driving, I'll get like that waft of sweet grass and I just get really excited because it's just so grounding and so beautiful. Um, but it's really good for our minds. So when we're making decisions, um, we can use it to like burn it uh, and pray with it to make those better decisions because it teaches us to make decisions for not only ourselves, but for our um, future generations and taking into account that our seven generations before us has led us to this moment. So are we honoring and respecting them with the decision that we make this day? And so when we make decisions like that, much better decisions because it's not just about us in this moment. It's about the past and honoring it and the future and leaving that legacy. So that's a sweet grass. It's uh, really good for anxiety as well. Um, sometimes if I can't sleep, I'll just put sweet grass on my tea and it's really good for insomnia. So it's great. Uh, then we're going to go to the south. And in the south, I have cedar, lovely cedar. Cedar is the body medicine um, and it also connects us to Mother Earth. Connects us to our adolescence because that's when we go through the most body changes than we ever will in our lives. Um, and it also connects us to um, just all the plants and the animals. It teaches us that we're all connected to them um, and to really honor that physical phase of our lives. So, uh, cedar is amazing for pretty much anything. Uh, I use it in tea, I throw it in my bath. Um, I've been grinding it up and putting it on mosquito bites um, because it has like a numbing agent in it. So if your skin's itchy, it, it numbs it. So it's not itchy anymore, which is great. Um, it also is antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and it has an antihistamine in it, which is amazing. And so it actually helps you heal faster, um, whether it be internally or externally, which is great. Uh, the next medicine we have, this is sage. So sage, um, it grows in abundance right now. Um, I'm planning on going picking hopefully next week. I'm trying to get less busy so that I can actually set a date to actually go picking. Um, but sage is just, it's beautiful. It grows everywhere on earth and many different varieties grow across the planet. So this is buffalo sage, which is found most commonly here in the prairies. And so it grows so abundantly that we'd actually har over harvest so that we could give to different communities. Um, but I tend to run out throughout the year because of how much sage I use, but it's so wonderful and so useful. So this is buffalo sage, and this is the sage that we're gonna be using today. Um, and sage is considered the women's medicine uh, because it is connected to the west, which is connected to water, connected to Grandmother Moon. Um, and Grandmother Moon cycles the tides, so the tides go in and out. Um, and without water, there would be no life. And so it teaches us about honoring and respecting um, water for the life-giving and the life-bearing uh, that it is, and also um, honoring women for that purpose as well, honoring our grandmothers and our mothers that have brought us here and those future generations that will be the ones um, bringing those next phase of life into the world. But it also teaches us about honoring um, our emotions in our community, uh, because without our emotions, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have strong families or strong friendships, uh, strong relationships. The reason um, it's also connected to the women's medicine and the moon is because the moon cycles in 28 days, just like a woman's moon cycle. And so when we look at the medicine wheel, it's about balance. So. Um, we're all a balance of masculine and feminine. And so it's not about um, better or worse than it's, we need all of it, not just one piece of it. Because if we only have one piece of the puzzle, we don't have a full thing. We don't have a, full, um, a view of who we are and we don't have that full healing that we need. We have to honor all of those aspects of ourselves, the masculine and the feminine aspects of ourselves. And so when we say these, these medicines are in different areas, they balance each other out. This is why I always lay them all out. So. Okay. Uh, now I have a whole bunch of sage all over my skirt. So that's sage, buffalo sage. Um, this is the Creek French when I crunch it up and then I roll it in a ball and that's a black butt roll. <laughs> and it's just a really great way of just compressing it so that it actually burns very, very smoothly. I put that in the smudge. 
And then the last medicine that I have is tobacco. I always keep my tobacco wrapped because you can't see your spirit. It's on the inside. And so you don't want to broadcast it to the world. But um, tobacco is creator's medicine. This is spirit medicine. And so when we gift it to someone, it's saying thank you from our spirit to their spirit. When we lay it down for someone, it's praying for them. When um, we lay it down for the plants, when we're um, picking any of our medicines, uh, it's so that we can say thank you. And so we're giving something back to the earth because if we take and take and take, we're giving nothing left. So we always want to make sure that we're giving something back in return. And um, so this is why tobacco is so important. Uh, it's a sense of protocol as well because it is creator's medicine. It's like that go between from you and creator to whoever um, you know, you're gifting, whether it be an elder or a knowledge keeper or a drummer or a singer or a storyteller. It's saying thank you for keeping those songs and stories alive, for keeping those teachings alive. And so when you give them tobacco, that's, that's a sense of protocol. Um, and so that's why tobacco is so, so important. It's also high in phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen, so it helps plants grow back faster. So it's amazing. It's also not good for us. So um, where all of the other medicines we can take into our body or we can have around us, um, tobacco, it's, it's a sacred medicine. It's creator's medicine. So it's actually not meant for us to breathe into our bodies, to take into our body, so we don't drink it in tea like we would anything else. Um, because it has a toxin on it so that we don't do that, so that we learn from it, that we learn how to pray with it, but not how to take it internally, not how to overuse it. Um, and sometimes when people smoke, it's not that they're addicted to um, smoking itself, it's that they have a lot of hurt and pain and trauma inside them that they need to heal. And once they're able to heal that, they're able to let go of any of their addictions. Um, but we need to treat addictions at the source, which is its pain, its hurt, its trauma, and uh, giving the people a sense of connection and healing. Um, I know I smoked for many, many years, and then as soon as I would quit and start and quit and start, but as soon as I had that realization, I was like, oh, okay, this is coming from a place of trauma, but what am I doing? I wasn't just carrying my stuff. I was carrying my mom's and my cookum's um, trauma as well, and so I had to be able to heal and honor them and respect them and um, forgive them for all that they had gone through. And that's what intergenerational trauma is. It's when somebody experiences something and they don't know how not to pass it on to the next. And so I was able to break that cycle of abuse with my own kids. Um, and I was very thankful for that. And so I took that um, as my healing mechanism, as my healing tool. And um, I, I'm living in a good way now. So very thankful for that. So um, I like to use matches to light my smudge uh, just because uh, if you're using a lighter, it's not really natural. So we didn't have lighters back in the day. We didn't have matches either, but of course we had flint and steel and different things. But uh, it takes a while to light a smudge flint and steel. So I'm very thankful for matches. Uh, if you're in a pinch and you don't really have anything else but a lighter, then yes, you can use it. But attempt to find some uh, matches for I'm just going to light my smudge here. Now, when you smudge, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. It's whatever feels good to you. And so um, it's really about the way that you feel comfortable praying and the way that you feel comfortable asking for the things that you need in your life. Some people say it out loud. Uh, some people, they do it internally. Um, my kids, when they smudge, they usually just uh, clean their hands, they bring it over their bodies, they smudge their head, their heart, their belly button, and then their bodies again, because that's the essentials apparently, and then they're like, boom, boom, and they move on. Um, but you can do a long smudge, you can do a short smudge, and so, oops, bring it here. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Is it in the picture? It is not in the picture. Okay, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. <laughs> but... You can see the smoke. So the first thing I do is I clean my hands in it. So anything that I'm carrying, I get rid of. And I bring it over my body full time. Out of the four directions in my body. And I smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. So it can be open to learn from many people and open to learn many, many different things and never be close minded. I smudge my ears. I'm very thankful for my hearing in this lifetime, but so I can be open to hear all of the messages that Creator has sent me and continues to send me. I smudge my eyes, 
I can see all of the beauty and creator around me. Also, so I can be open to see everyone for who they truly are, so I can see the truth as well as here. Much my nose, so I can smell danger and cookies. I smudge my mouth so I can speak only true and kind words that are helpful and benefit people. I smudge my throat. So I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime so I can continue to give voice to the voiceless. But also speak up for myself. I smudge my lungs so I breathe good, clean air. Touch my heart so I can show kindness and compassion and unconditional love to all those around me, my friends and my family, but also with myself. You can be gentle and love yourself. Touch my stomach so all of the food that I eat today will nourish my body. Touch my womanhood because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. Then I stretch my shoulders and my back so I can carry all of the responsibilities that creators gifted me with grace and humility. I stretch my arms, my hands, so I can do the good work that creators put me here to do. So my hands as an artist, because those are useful. Then I'm going to stretch my legs so I walk this red road in a good way. The red road is the path of Aboriginal spirituality. And then I stretch my feet. So I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth. And I tread lightly upon her, honoring her with every step. And then if there's anywhere else in your body that you need a little extra love, a little extra help. So um, my mid-back, very sore today. My hips are always sore just because I've had four hip surgeries. And for some reason, still not working properly. but. I own it. And their healing journey, just like my own healing journey. Um, if there's anyone in your life that you know you're worried about or you're thinking about, uh, you can hold them in your heart as much for them. Um, if somebody is going through a lot, you just ask for you know their gentle journey or their healing. Um, and you send them love and appreciation. And say, I'm praying for my friends, my family, people around the world that are suffering. And then um, if you have like anxiety, you can smudge your head a little extra uh, or anywhere else that you need it. And so when you're all done, you just say hi hi or witch or merci or grazia or xie xie or however you say thank you in your language. Um, just to say thank you to the medicines and to the process of smudging. Now that I've done that, uh, I'm going to share with you the four directions. Okay, my, oh, right, my drum's in the corner. <laughs> so this song is, um, I learned it as the four directions song because I learned it in, uh, in a ceremony. Um, but it's also known as the Cherokee Morning Song. It can be found on YouTube as the Cherokee Morning Song. Um, and it was done by Robbie Robertson and Ulali. Um, wonderful, wonderful groups. If you're looking for more indigenous music, they're wonderful. Ulali is wonderful. And so, uh, yeah, I, you can hear the four winds in the song. I knew it was the four winds of the four directions song. And um, each has a different direction. Each have a, a distinctive purpose and reason. That's why when we smudge, we honor all four directions. So this is when they are hope, the four directions.
the strong woman song has been on my mind a lot lately and so i wanted to share that one um so the strong woman song is um it's og Cree. it's from out east well east central east central east um but when we sing it it teaches us to really honor the power and the strength of uh, women of community uh, bringing everyone together um and how the women really would lead the community they were the ones that always fill in the gaps when somebody is missing and when we sing it we honor our murdered missing indigenous women and girls we honor those uh families that have lost people through the 60s scoop or through the residential school system and just the strength of the women to continue to carry on uh it's really about acknowledging how much power we have within us but also how much power we have when we connect um with each other and so this song was also known as the turtle song originally and the turtle uh represents the woman it represents mother earth because we are on turtle island we're on her back um but it also represents the faces of the moon so when we look at the turtle it has 13 bumps to represent the 13 moons in a year and it has 28 ridges along the outside to represent 28 days in a moon cycle which is within our own moon cycle and so this is why it shows the sacredness of women and how we're reflected in the sky so if you ever question how sacred you are just look up <laughs> and, um, and you'll get your answer it's really about finding your own strength not having to rely on those outside things but knowing that you have it within you um, and it's really about the strength and the passion that we have to lead our generations forward when we sing this we acknowledge those women that um, have been suffering those women who are hurting uh, those family members that are striving for justice and the reminder of our sacredness um, as as women um, but all of us are sacred as beings, human beings, and we're all connected. We're all family, all my relations. And so this is the strong woman song. <laughs>
actually it's so powerful. Oh. <laughs> Along the same lines of that, um, the mother song has been crossing my mind a lot lately as well. And so the mother song, I was um, taught, well, shared, it was shared with me. I, I did a, a kind of a song exchange so, uh, with my friend Lacey, and she had learned it from her elder. And it's such a blessing to be able to share it. So in the song, that um, it's that mother, that anguish of the mother as her child goes further and further and further away from her. So my mothers, we want to we want to protect our kids. We want to make sure that they are safe, that they learn, that you know that they can grow into beautiful, beautiful human beings and wonderful adults. You want to be able to give them all of the love and the protection that you can, and you know that they're going to eventually, you know, um, become their own independent being. You want to lay that foundation for them by giving them unconditional love and support and helping them discover who they are. Uh, in this song, it's that process of being able to let it go but it also teaches us to really honor that past and what's happened to us and the reason a lot of our communities are still hurting and a lot of our families are still hurting is because with the residential schools uh they took away our ability to parent they took our children away from us so we couldn't raise them in a good way they took our children away from many many generations and so a lot of those teachings that are intrinsic uh in raising your kids things like the stories that we share and the songs that we share and the way that we show unconditional love to each other that was taken away from us and it created um, so many rifts of sadness and hurt and heartbreak not only for the parents who've lost their children but the children who are longing for that love and that acceptance and to be raised the way that they should have been in the beginning um, and so it honors that it also honors the same thing that happened with the 60s group where those children were taken away from their communities, from their families, from their loved ones, um, and put where they didn't belong. And so when we sing it, we honor their struggles as well. And also residential schools are no. So unfortunately, the foster care system is taking that place and taking families away from each other. And so it's important to really acknowledge and fix what's been broken, um, repair those relationships within family. And give us the ability to become parents again. So when we sing the mother song, it's truly about acknowledging. And so this is the mother song.
Share anything that's really, really important. Uh, this song is Jewish, and um, we sing it a lot of the time when we march for murdered and missing into truth uh, because it's that voice, uh, it reminds us of the strength that women have and uh, what a warrior truly is. A warrior is someone who stands up for what's right. A warrior isn't necessarily someone who's on the front lines, you know, fighting and screaming and, you know, um, raising their voice like that, but sometimes it's that person who picks up the pieces and so on and so on. It's the person who does letter writing campaigns. It's the person who makes sure that their community stays grounded and strong and that the voices of those that we have lost doesn't go out. Um, it's really about honoring and acknowledging the strength that we have within each and every one of us. And we're all warriors in our own way. The only time we're not is when we're silent and we don't do anything. And so it really teaches us about reclaiming our strength, um, not only as women, but as a community, uh, and so the Women's Warriors song honors that. So this is Women's Warriors song. is from Joan Henry. She's a Rapaho Cherokee, so this is an Arapaho Cherokee song. And um, it teaches us about that pulse that we have. So Mother Earth has a pulse. Everything in nature has a pulse. It has a rhythm. Our heartbeat has a rhythm. This is what our drums, that's that heartbeat of Mother Earth that we're always looking for. When we come into this world, we're looking for that heartbeat. That's that connection um, to each and every one of us. It's you know that unconditional love that's within that heartbeat. Because our heart will continue on. Um, and so it's really about honoring the sacredness of Mother Earth, honoring the sacredness of women, honoring that pulse that's within each and every one of us. And so this is the famous person, Anagea. I'm going to have a sip of water first. I'm going to honor my throat. <laughs> oh. 
And so in it, you can hear the tears, and I'm, I've seen amazing things happen with the song. I've seen miracles happen with the song, and it's really about honoring all four parts of our being. And so when we need to heal, we need to heal every part of ourselves, not just one thing. And then I think that's kind of what the problem with like modern medicine is: they're only focusing on the symptoms, they're not looking at root causes, they're not looking at you know the spiritual connection to it, and the emotional connection to it, and our mental connection to you know physical healing. And I think if we look at all of those things, we'll be able to understand ourselves and each other better. And that's how we heal. And so this song, when we sing it, it honors the healing that happens in all four directions. And so it's honoring and praying for not only our physical healing, but our mental healing, our emotional healing, and our spiritual well-being and healing. And so um, when we sing it, we sing it in four rounds. But the third round is the healing round. So we actually stop drumming in that round. And in that moment, in that silence, um, that's our invitation to, to pray and to set those intentions and to think about the people in our lives or the things in our lives that we need healing with and ask for those things. Pray hard on them. And then when the beat comes in, when the drum comes back in, we just let it out to the universe and we let creator do that work. Um, and it's incredible just how, how strong this song is and how it can heal in such amazing, amazing ways. And so we sing it with the heartbeat. That's the, again that women beat, that healing beat, the ceremonial beat. And so this is the healing song. Um, I had heard it before when I was really, really young. Uh, and then I heard it again through a few of my elders, uh, Mary Lynn Rat, uh, Carrie Moore, Olivia Manitopoulos, um, my emotion the chariot, uh, not my Coco, my Coco is very very new for songs. But um, it was really it was a blessing to be able to hear it again and for it to come again. And so it's the healing. Hi, we hi, you. 
呀嘿呀吼，喂嗨喂嗨喂嗨哟，喂嗨喂嗨喂嗨哟，喂嗨喂嗨哟。I'm not sure when that song we're going to take off, uh, but this song, um, I was going to share the traveling song, but for some reason it just doesn't want to come. So that's okay. So I'll share another traveling song, the, uh, the Thunderbird song. And so the Thunderbird is, um, I mean, it's that spirit, it's that, that guiding force, uh, whether it be fate or destiny or whatever you believe in, it's, the, it's what pushes us on the path that we're on. And it tries to nudge us gently back to the path that we should be on. Um, and that's what our intuition is all about. And so things start to stack up. You're like, okay, wait a second. Maybe I'm on the wrong path. Um, but of course, we're quite stubborn and we refuse to listen to our intuition. And every time we, well, our intuition is never wrong. And so we always get into trouble when we don't listen to our intuition. And so that's the Thunderbird. That's the Thunderbird speaking through our spirit, which is right here in our belly button. That's why it's that gut feeling. You just know and uh, that's your intuition. And it might be something just gentle and passing, but sometimes it'll hammer you over the head. And if you're not on the right path and you keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again, or if you get stuck in that rut and you're just doing the same things over and over and over again, eventually the Thunderbird will get fed up and just knock you on the right path. Sometimes in not a gentle way uh, with me, it was with a truck. <laughs> so Thunderbird hit me with a truck. Um, and uh, I had a choice in that moment. I could either be like, oh, get hit by a truck, oh, my life is over. Or I can figure out, okay, well, obviously I wasn't on the right path because this happened to me. So I had to figure out where do I need to be? And I'm thankful every day because it led me here. It led me to the moment where I can share my teachings, my stories, and my songs. And um, just the path that I'm on now is such a beautiful path. And I'm so thankful to be able to share in such a wonderful way um, with so many different people. And so I'm very humbled and thankful not to get hit by a truck because that was not fun, but <laughs> that's a Thunderbird for me where I needed to be. And so uh, this is the Thunderbird song. Actually, I'm going to do the Raven song. So I'm missing a lot of ravens lately. I have been chasing magpies and ravens and lovely squirrels out of my yard. I was able to salvage maybe a cup and a half of nine king cherries from my tree because of the devastation that's been going on in my garden. But um, <laughs> the raven reminds me to laugh. It reminds me that, you know, just you know, laugh at yourself sometimes. Don't take yourself too seriously because the raven is about humility. It's about being humble and um, just, yeah, there's so much beauty in life. And it's just too short to take it up seriously. So the raven reminds us of that um, daily. <laughs> so this is the raven song. Uh, this is a Cherokee song, a uh, Cherokee song. Sorry, it's Cree and Cherokee. Uh, and it had come, I heard it and I was like, oh, I know this song. It was weird. And then I finally reached out and finally was able to um, 
track down the person who had posted it on YouTube, which it can't be found anymore, so I'm not sure what happened. But um, yeah, he was just like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, Muskeg. He's like, oh, wait, I'm related to people in Muskeg. Who was your family? I was like, great eyes. He's like, oh, we're cousins. And I'm like, oh, of course, because we're related to everybody if you're free, apparently. Um, but, so he's like, this is a Cherokee song, because he had learned it from both his grandparents and was Cherokee, and one was Cree from our reserve, most I think. And so it's interesting how family comes back around. And so this is the Raven song, and this is the song I will leave you with today. being able to share like this and stay safe stay healthy and i hope to see everybody in the flesh soon because i really miss hugs <laughs> all right love you all bye